you guys are going to call me a homo for this comment, but like the Bills destroyed the Commanders last week, and I think <laughs> Is that the no, but no, but all seriousness, the command, the, I think the Commanders went on the road and proved in Philadelphia the Commanders are a better team than I think they get credit for. Jay Croucher, even. <laughs> Even somebody as esteemed as you admitted. I've never seen Jay laugh this hard no, in my Jay, life. Jay, Jay, uh, Jay on the three Bills games. beating the Dolphins is proof that the commanders are good. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting no. take. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. I'm Connor Rogers alongside Matthew Berry. He's on to something about those commanders and Jay Croucher. <laughs> Ipso facto, it's science. Unbelievable. I, mean, I really meant it when I said I've never seen Jay laugh that hard. I'm okay time. with that being the seventh take of Bill's Dolphins. <laughs> Number one. First take, though. Monday morning. Of Bill's Dolphins. The, big the commanders are good. Yeah, unbelievable. I was, I was merely trying oh, to see wow, look at this. That's right. That's me. That's exactly right. It's just like, <laughs> exactly. Uh, you just, days, I don't think you understand the resources that went into this Photoshop, by the way. <laughs> hours upon hours. Like, look, when you look at it logically, it, really all makes, sense. <laughs> it all makes sense. I just, I just, it's all science. Just tr trust me on this one. Trust me. Okay. Like, I think we're looking at a Bills Commander Super Bowl. I think is what we're looking at. <laughs> that's what they are saying. Yes. Yeah, that's what some people so are saying. Some year, in the future, <clears throat> the next yeah, some years. some year. Well, I mean, there was. I mean, you know, there was a Bills Washington professional football team sure. Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if Jay and I were alive yet, but there probably was one, not. One but uh, just you know, Commanders Washington took care of business. One. Yes, yeah. they did in a big way. Yeah, it's a shame you didn't have Sam Howell for it. You would have won by even more. That's a good point there. I, I will tell you this. Um, this is a true story. I was living in, I was going to Syracuse, this is, you know, how old I am, but like I was going to Syracuse at the time, Syracuse University. And so, you know, obviously Syracuse right there in upstate New York, everyone. So they like a local radio station, my buddy, my, my, shout out to my buddy, Adam Shapiro, who's hosting a sports talk show at the time, still one of my best friends. And he's like, hey, you should call in because we're doing, you know, predictions on this game. And I'm like, okay. And I said, uh, and I called and I said, you know, I said, Washington 57 nothing. And the, my buddy goes, come on, come on, give a real prediction. I said, that's my prediction. 57 nothing, Washington wins this game. Because everyone else, literally everyone else had called up and said Buffalo was winning the game. I was the only one to take Washington. So I wound up being, you know, correct. Because I think off the top of my head, Blake, you can look this up. I think it was 37 24 off the top of my head, I think. Okay, so that Washington close won to that 57 Super Bowl. nothing. Yep. Yeah. I had the right team. <laughs> yeah. Literally everyone else took the Bills. 37-24. the money, the money line. Yeah. Was it 37-24? There yeah. you go. Nice. Correct. So I was nice off 20 points on mine, and I gave the Bills 24. I didn't. I was off 24, <laughs> whatever. But the fact is, the fact of the matter is, is Washington was triumphant over Buffalo. And one day again, they will be soon. One day. One All right. Day. It's waiver Wire Day on the show. We got a lot to get through, and of yes. course, we are going to start. Uh, with some notable players, though, that are on the buy, because you might need the waiver wire more than ever right mm. now, even if you're having a lot of success this year. You know, the Chargers are on a buy, which means no Keenan Allen, no Josh Palmer, no Quentin Johnson, and even Austin Eckler trending the right way. He's on the bye week as well. When you look at the Browns, Amari Cooper and Elijah Moore with the Bucks, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Seattle, we've seen that what that offense can do. DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett out as well. So a lot of notable names this week, Barry, on a, the bye. A lot of notable names on the bye and Donovan Peoples-Jones. <laughs> yeah, also on a bye. Yeah. Lawrence, where are you at? Where are you at? Notable and unnotable. Notable names. and unnotable names on a bye this week. So uh, if you need some wide, if you need some wide receivers as well, by the way, uh, quickly, just so we're talking about wide receivers, uh, news came out just before we went on air, Mike Evans dealing with a, what they're calling a minor hamstring injury. Never liked that. Yeah. yeah. It, are any hamstring injuries minor, Jay Croucher? No, I don't think so. That's a concern. It's one that you can re-aggravate as well. It's just fortunate that the bye is well time for Mike Evans, but if he's not right, then Trey Palmer becomes a little bit more interesting, I He's, guess. He continues. Look, first off, we think the Buccaneers' offense is better than I think pre yeah. preseason perceptions were. Like, Baker's they're 3-1. and one. Baker's playing, like, solid to mm. slightly above average quarterback play, right? 70% of snaps for back-to-back -back weeks for Trey Palmer. Like, he's a rookie that is clearly their number three. And so, I think if Mike Evans were to miss any time, Palmer would be the beneficiary there. So, just, I don't know. If you're in a deeper league... You don't need anyone this week. Maybe a grab and stash. There are other people that we'll talk about here in the waiver wires. But just wanted to bring that to your attention in case. In ca you know, they always say it's minor. And the next thing you know, they're, they're out for a month. Yep. Again, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen here with Mike Evans. But you don't like to see 
any kind of hamstring injury, especially when you're a wide receiver who needs your legs. Don't know what's happened to hamstrings for the past yeah. kind of five, seven years. It used to be a ham you pull your hamstring, you're out three weeks, and then you're back. It was always a 21-day yeah, thing. Linger. Now there's Mike mm. Evans has got a minor hamstring mm. strain. Cooper Cup, are we ever going to see him again? Months. Yeah, so it's Th That's uh, it's the point, right? It was a minor hamstring injury for Cooper Cup yes. in the preseason. Yeah. He'll be ready for the start of the mm. season. He's going to miss week one. Mm. Not, now he's out four games, and we, we're hoping he comes back here yeah. in week five. Again, I'm not suggesting any of this is with Mike Evans, but it just – Something to note. Speaking of stash ads, as we talk about Trey Palmer, Jay, what about Quentin Johnston right now? Kind of a guy that just can't get involved mm. in the Chargers offense. They are out Mike Williams for the season. Any interest in keeping him on a roster? Not really. I mean, yeah. I guess if you it. if it's a deep league and you've got a someone that you can capably drop, then fine, go ahead. Like he does have pedigree. There is in theory an opening for him, but I just think that we've talked about this with the success that rookie wide receivers have had in the NFL from the jump recently. Olave, Jefferson, Garrett Wilson, uh, the list goes on, Puka Nakua, Zay Flowers. Uh, the fact that Quinton Johnson just didn't have a role, hasn't had a role really at all, I think that's a concern. Yeah, I mean, right. In and, that and, offense. And, right, in, in that offense, right. Tank Dell, by the way, is another yep. one on the, on the list. And so, like, as you're talking about here, Connor, like, again, one of the knocks on him coming out of college was raw. inconsistent. Was raw. Yeah. raw and inconsistent. And so there'll be some flash games. There'll be some spike games later in the season for Quentin Johnson. But Johnston, and I don't mind it again if you have a deep bench and you can stash him if you don't need him anytime soon. But if you're looking for help right now, we have some names that we like a little bit more. I'll also just mention real quickly before we dive into this list, Romeo Dobbs is available in about 46% of Yahoo leagues. What we like to do is we have to, they have to be available in more than 50% of Yahoo leagues for them to make our waiver wire list. So Dobbs just misses the cut, but 46%. It's worth seeing if he's available in your league. If he is, he'd be our number one wide receiver ad this week. 12 targets or more in back-to-back -back games, 18 or more fantasy points in three or four games. The Packers offense and Jordan Love had looked better. Now, again, a lot of the production came without Christian Watson back. He came back last week, played limited snaps, but still Dobbs is somebody who made a name for himself last year and at the moment seems to be the preferred target of Jordan Love. Yeah, and he's, this is also a situation, Connor, where you can buy the increase because of the context change. It's a new quarterback who seems to have a really good rapport with Romeo Dobbs. I think he's just a borderline, like a wide receiver too going forward if he's going to see this kind of target share even as Watson ramps up more. Right, the volume is there. It seems to be uh, Jordan Love's comfort blanket in the offense. He's yeah, kind of the I guy mean, he'll lean on at times. I'm not ready to go there on the target share again because I, I want to see a full game of Christian yeah. Watson, also a full game of Luke Musgrave. Remember, he left the game against yep. Detroit very early on with a concussion. So I want to see sort of the full complement of passing options yep. before I'm really say like yes Romeo Dobbs is clearly the al alpha in this yep. passing offense but he's too good to be available in 46 percent of leagues yep. that's the key point and here. the good thing too is that you, there's room to go down and still be hugely valuable if he's getting 12 13 targets if that turns into nine that's still perfectly fine correct we showed you the notable players on the bye week I'll tell you a team that could use a bye week and that mm. is the Cincinnati Bengals right now with what's going on with them Dude. and we got to hear from T Higgins on the status of his rib injury uh, I plan not to be out, you know, for a while. So uh, I plan to be back either, you know, maybe this week, maybe next week. It's not a crazy, crazy, you know, injury to where I, I have to sit out, you know, multiple, multiple, multiple weeks. But man, I just it, it all just depends on, you know, the soreness, you know, and, and, and it's really up to me at the end of the day. Where the team is right now, I feel like, you know, uh, me, my presence on the field can, can really help the team, you know, in the next few few weeks. You know, the next few weeks is huge. So, I mean, um, just me just going out there, you know, making plays, you know, that I know I can make is just will help the team out in the future. So. That okay. was Bengals wide receiver T. Higgins on dealing with a fractured rib right now. Hopeful to play on Sunday, but not overly positive. Okay, yeah, Barry. and listen, love the kid's attitude for a site. Like, it's not up to him. Yeah. It's up to the medical staff. Right, like, you don't get on the field unless the medical staff clears you. Now, I understand he'll have a say in that because ultimately it's going to be about, and on some level, it's going to be about pain tolerance. And if he's like, no, I feel good, I can go, then okay, like maybe they'll lean more too. But like, like, but we hear this all the time from players, like, I'm playing, I want to play. And then medical staff are like, um, no, you're not, actually. So yeah. I, I would be great to see him back out there, but I wouldn't count on it uh, in the next at least. Fractured ribs are, are no joke, Jay Croucher. Yes, no, they're not. I haven't done one myself yet, Matthew, but uh, I hear they are indeed no joke. We can we can do that during the <laughs> yeah, we can, yeah, yeah. To, uh, pain tolerance segment. Pain, yeah, exactly. Uh, hamstring, this is pull. A, a hamstring pull. Hamstring pull. We'll fracture a rib. 
Penn State, Blake, grab a hammer because <laughs> during the commercial break, we're going to try something with Jay. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, I, I was just, Blake's as a involved. general rule, uh, I yeah, would well, say. Well, if I do it, then I'm liable. <laughs> That's but right. if, if Penn State, Blake does it, who cares? Yeah. Right. We can get another researcher. Penn State, Blake, da so. Damien's on deck. For yeah, exactly. Show. I'm just. Yeah. No, it's start thing. It's yes, like we're playing chess here, not checking. Yeah, that's right. Come on, Connor. Fall guy. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's got a good fall guy. Yeah. Gotta have a fall guy. He's so was smiley it, as fall fans that play. Who, who's, was it? Was it Dion? Who's the guy that? Who was that? That said that had the, that told the NFL players that you had to have a fall guy. No. Who was it? There was there was somebody <laughs> I that don't want to make accusi- Chris accusations. Chris Carter. What? Chris Carter. Uh, I'm told. Oh, Car- Chris Carter. Oh, Chris oh, Carter. Yes. That's what it You're was. Right. It's Chris Carter. Yes. <laughs> right. This is a, not an accusation. This is a known thing. Like this is a very public thing that he he told. He told a bunch of NFL rookies, yeah. you got to have a foul guy. <laughs> it doesn't just apply to NFL rookies. It's also podcast hosts. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, yeah. It's a life Penn lesson. Penn State Blake. Everyone's like, why do you have Penn State Blake on staff? He's my fall guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, Obviously. He's the smiling hammer man. Yes, yeah. that's exactly <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so T. Higgins. Um, <laughs> I would say just as a general rule, don't read into anything that a player says about their... Remember when David Montgomery was out, he just ruled himself out for three weeks and then <laughs> was back a week later and running the ball 32 yeah. times? Like, unless a player says something like, I heard a pop or something. Right, yeah. That's maybe, <clears throat> yeah, that's a concern. But outside of that, we'll see with T Higgins. If he doesn't go, Tyler Boyd is the clear guy who's going to see his usage increase. When Higgins is in, Boyd is like the quintessential guy who's potentially on your waiver wire in a shallow league and will give you five for 40 and nine fantasy points. But if Higgins is out, in a team that's going to have to throw a fair bit going forward, I think that he's a very viable option. Yeah, I mean, look, he's had three straight games with at least seven targets, which is, which is a positive, and you expect that target uh, share to increase, even though he plays the slot and Higgins outside. The fact of the matter is he's a known quantity, has a relationship with Joe Burrow, he knows that offense well. So you would expect his target share to increase. The problem is it just hasn't mattered, the seven targets in three straight games, because they've, they've been bad. Yeah. They've, they've just they've been bad. The offense has been bad. Having said that, they're at Arizona this week. Cardinals allow the fourth highest catch rate to opposing wide receivers this week. So, I mean, if ever there was a get right spot for the Bengals passing offense and potentially Tyler Boyd, it would be this. Then they're, Seattle, then they're home to Seattle. They've got a bye and then they're at San Francisco. Sort of feels like, again, I'm not a medical doctor. I just play one on the internet. <laughs> He's at Arizona, home to Seattle and a bye. Sort of feels like you could see T. Higgins coming back after the bye. Right, it's it's a two to three week rib rib injury. They're saying like, just feels like if they can get by Arizona and Seattle, which no, no gimmies. I mean, there's no gimmies right Right. now with the Bengals the way they're playing. Yeah, particularly with the Seahawks defense (laughs) last night looking absolutely insane. We'll we'll get to Devin Witherspoon and his friends, but I think the problem is is that you said that Arizona is the perfect spot to get right. You know what was the perfect spot to get right? It was the Tennessee, Tennessee Titans. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. They scored three points. It couldn't be Tennessee better. Tennessee put Deshaun Watson in a time machine back to 2020. Yeah. He had know. the only good game he's ever had in his life in Cleveland against the Titans. And uh, the Bengals were completely powerless against them. So yeah, they might I, just be broken. It, it, they might be. They might be. And obviously losing T. Higgins doesn't help. But all that said, he's getting a lot of targets with an increased target share coming for what, in theory, should be one of the better offenses in the NFL, in theory, is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, yes, in with a, in theory, good matchup at the Arizona Cardinals. So, again, I, look, Joe Burrow is too good. This offense has too long a track record for them to be this bad this long. I believe they will turn the ship around. I'm hoping it's, it's this week, and if, it, if they do, Boyd's going to be a part of it with Higgins out. But, you know, again... There's literally no evidence on the field this year to suggest that. Yep. In some big fantasy news that many have probably heard by now, Jameson Williams, his suspension reduced to four games from six for the gambling um, suspension he was supposed to serve. So he is back, and we got to hear from Lions head coach Dan Campbell on Jameson Williams' return to the team. Man, he just needs to come in, and I'm not worried about him working. He will, and it's just about polishing all the little things. And, and, uh, we also know if he does play, he can't play 60 plays. That's not smart. So uh, we, we can't do that to him. So we'll, we'll see where it goes. And uh, it's all about improvement. No different than the rest of the team, man. Every, every week we just got to get a little bit better. He just needs to get a little bit better. And, uh, and we'll take it from there. That was Lions head coach Dan Campbell on Jamison Williams' return, kind of easing him back in. But, Barry, when you look at this upcoming schedule, yeah. Carolina at Tampa Bay and at Baltimore, but then Vegas – I mean, there's some opportunity when Jameson is fully ramped back up in an offense that can throw the ball. Yeah, so he's expected to have a role in week five, but the question is, is what kind of role is he going to have? Because, like, let's face it, 
the offense is rolling well, and like all due respect, Josh Reynolds played well. Right. Like I mean, like I don't think it's one of those things. Like okay, hey, Josh Reynolds, you're you're a guy that we got like for cheap from Tennessee, and Jamison Williams, you were our first round pick a year ago. So too bad. Like they're going to keep rolling with who they're working with here. So I think you'll see. Uh, my point is, is like I would really like to have Jamison Williams on my roster. I'm yes. absolutely not starting him this week. I'm going to need to see it until you're ready to go. But the fact is, is that, I mean, talk about Jamison Williams as a prospect. If that guy hadn't been hurt. Oh, insane. I mean, we got to see it on the one bomb he caught last right. year. That's his game. The deep speed is not just good. It's it's in the Jalen Waddle territory. Like, that's the kind of speed we're talking about in an offense that it also opens things up for David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs, Amon Ross St. Brown, all of the underneath plays. So Sam Laporta. The Sam Laporta. They need him on the field. It just feels like from a fantasy statistical performance, it might look like how Marvin Mims has been the first couple of weeks mm. where you're like, okay, he ran 12 routes and he caught a 35-yard pass, but we just haven't had him on the field to be featured yet. But he had speed two, is insane. He had two touches last year. Both of them gained 40 <laughs> yards. He had the 41-yard reception. He also had a rush that went for 40 as well. Like – like, I was told by other people, I don't know where he was on your list because you and I were work, working together at the time, that I was told by others that had he not been injured and he can't, he'd have been the number one wide receiver drafted yes. that year in terms of that's, that's right. where his skill level is. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we had Drake London and Garrett Wilson go above. The Lions gave a fortune to go up and get him because that's how prioritized he was. But, I mean, this is a player that if you can manufacture touches, and we think their offensive coordinator, Ben Johnson, understands how to do that, game-breaking kind of playmaking ability. Yeah, I think the problem is is that – Amon Ross St. Brown, locked in, wide receiver one. Yes. Sam Laporta quietly is having like the greatest rookie tight end season of all time and yeah. can't even crack the top six in offensive rookie of the year odds because the field is so loaded. He's going to continue to be fed. And they just ran the ball 43 yep. times against Green Bay. So I'm not sure really if there's much of an opportunity. And do you think it's a concern, Connor, that he played six games last year and had one catch? Is that a concern? I think a little bit. I think, number one, he's just a guy that can't, he's always behind going into the season like he needs a camp this yeah. is a guy that needs a camp and an offense that is going to ask a lot of you so I don't think they're gonna tr they don't feel like they need to trust him yet right now this could be like fantasy playoff relevant I don't know if it's fantasy yeah. first half of the season <clears throat> relevant I mean I could see a role for him this is gonna sound insane here for a second but I could see a like a Marvin Mims like role for him where like he's only playing like 10 snaps a game but like he gets like three deep bomb targets on t on those 10 snaps yeah. and he converts two of them and you're excited and all of a sudden, about right it. and then yeah. all of a sudden you're like wait a minute like where's this guy why can't this guy get right. on the field more but um here's what I would say he's got the pedigree and the talent along with an offense and a quarterback that if he gets right could be a league winner down the stretch. Like, he's got that kind of upside. Like, as long as we're talking about, like, bench stashes, like, I'd rather Jamison Williams than Quentin Johnston. No, by, by a mile. Yeah. I mean, like, in terms yeah. of just upside, in terms of enormous upside. Like, again, you mentioned Jalen Waddle. Like, that's what we're talking about here in terms of his potential, you know, yeah. skill set. Again, we haven't seen it yet, and it's he hasn't had a camp. But uh, as he gets more acclimated in this offense, we talked about this all the time in the preseason around uh, Amon Ross St. Brown and Jared Goff and the Lions. But again, seven of their final eight games are in a dome. Uh, again, and so just again, on the turf, inside, that speed taking yeah. over as he gets more acclimated. If you yeah. can afford the bench spot, we yeah. like Jamison yeah. Williams a lot for the second half of the year, potentially. I've stashed him in my biggest league, thinking playoffs for him. I believe, and I really do believe in the talent over time. The next one I'm really <coughs> excited about on the waiver wire this week, and that's Michael Wilson, the rookie wide receiver for Arizona, coming off a massive week against the Niners where he caught all seven of his targets, 76 yards, and most importantly, the two touchdowns. Jay, he's available in 98% of leagues. This is going to be somebody that you're going to see the fab budget thrown on because – Josh Dobbs is proving he can play, and Michael Wilson might be the most exciting target in an offense that does have Hollywood Brown. I think that's the big thing is that Dobbs against San Francisco's defense looked completely at home and played really well. And if he can support and Dallas, by the way, yes, like he played. I mean, yeah, like again, the, that's potentially the, thing. the like, two best yeah. defenses in the league, along with you know Cleveland and the Jets and these type of teams. So I think he's kind of matchup proof at the moment, which is completely insane to say about Josh Dobbs. But they're throwing the ball effectively, and it looks like Wilson and Brown are the two guys in that offense that you really want. And Wilson has seen his role increase. He got the seven targets last week that was the first time he top four targets in a game and I think this is going to be just a real thing going forward the third straight game with over 55 yards receiving as well obviously this is kind of a breakout game but I will tell you like again and I have I've interviewed a ton of players in my life right and I always go to the NFLPA rookie premiere and sometimes you meet a kid and you're like I love this kid and then they do absolutely nothing like I mean like 
Like I loved Miles Boykin, like, you know, in terms uh, of an interview, right. like just great interview. It just hasn't happened for him yet. And then there are other guys that I've interviewed. I'm like, I don't know about that guy. And then they go out and they just completely ball out. Right. You know, um, Sam Howell. Uh, <laughs> did not get to interview <laughs> Sam Howell. Uh, that would not be the case here. But like, no, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, like, did not have a great interview with Dalvin Cook. Right. But again, yeah. obviously, you know, amazingly productive NFL career. Uh, Michael Wilson absolutely loved him when I when I spoke to him. Followed him on Instagram. Like, I don't often do that. I often don't follow players on Instagram because I also don't want, like, you know, I'm like, but I liked him so much. And when I say, like, liked him, it's not just, like, like a vibe thing. It's just in terms of, like, his approach to the game, in terms of, like, sort of his focus. And just when you talk to him, you, you sort of, you get a sense of players when you talk to him. And you, when you've talked to as many as I have, you get a sense of, like, here's somebody that understands, like, this is a job and this is a real opportunity and kids grow up dreaming of being in the NFL and now I've got a chance to do something. And then the other people that come in just like, yeah, man, you know, I'm just fast. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. like, and you're like, whatever. And like, um, says that all no, the time. right, yeah. Connor does all the time. <laughs> exactly. No, but anyway, Michael Wilson was just, just a really impressive young man um, in terms of his approach and just really impressed. So it's great to see. And as you talked about the fact that like, First round talent. Yeah, his road to get here has not been easy. I no. mean, he missed time at Stanford through three straight seasons on and off with significant injury. And then he goes to the senior bowl and we're all standing there watching the best wide receiver on the field that we've barely gotten to see play college yeah. football. And now it's translated into camp. I mean, also where they drafted him, I was like, okay, they believe in him. Because a lot of people thought with the medical, he'd fall to late day three. They believe in him. He's incredibly talented, like you said, incredible character. And he's in an offense that I think he's going to be a featured player. Right. And as we always talk about, it's talent and opportunity. We believe in the talent and the opportunity is there because it's really like it's Hollywood Brown and Zach Ertz and there's not much else in that passing attack, which is, you know, better than I think a lot of people thought it would be. Yep, very fantasy friendly as well because as competent as they've been, they're going to be underdogs in almost every game they play, so they're going to have to throw. Our next one here, guys, wide receiver Michael Gallup, of course, the, the slow return last year from injury, but in back-to-back -back games this year, five-plus catches, 60-plus yards, their upcoming schedule. They got the Niners here, of course, on Sunday Night Football on NBC and Peacock. The Chargers bye week and then the Rams. Gallup Berry is available in 81% of leagues right now. Yeah, 18% target share in the last two weeks as well. Niners, as good as they are defensively, they've allowed the second most receptions to opposing wide receivers. And it does feel like over the last couple of weeks, like going into the season, we're like, okay, we know number one wide receiver there is CeeDee Lamb, eights as I call him. And then after that, like, okay, what's it going to be? And I think there, the general assumption was, Brandon Cooks. They made the trade for him in the offseason. But honestly, it's been Michael Gallup, who is now two years removed from that bad injury uh, as well. Somebody who's been in that system, has a connection with Dak Prescott, has been there with Dak the entire time as well. So uh, Gallup, who's available in 81% of leagues, on a Cowboys offense that, you know, unfortunately the problem is, is they just their defense is so good they haven't had to throw the ball uh, that much. But to your point, Niners, Chargers, by Rams, those are all teams that are – you know, good to above average. And so I think they're going to have to be more offensive minded in those games. Yep. And I think it's at the point now where I'd probably rather have Gallup than Brandon Cooks. Agreed. Just because it just hasn't really happened for Brandon Cooks. And Gallup, before the injury, he was a guy who was on, you know, 100 target paces for multiple years in a row. Dak Prescott just seems to have his guys. Like he always targeted Dalton Schultz. He's got Jake Ferguson now. And he just hasn't established the rapport with Brandon Cooks. And the other thing with Dallas is that. Two things. One, C.D. Lamb is not being force-fed the way that, say, Devontae Adams is. This is a more right. egalitarian offense. And also, mm. they haven't really run the ball that effectively. Tony Pollard's 4.3 yards per carry. That's kind of under what you would expect. So, I think they are a team that, that does need to be throwing, and, and Gallup can provide value. As we always do, let's recap Barry's Week 5 top wide receiver waiver wire targets. We got Tyler Boyd, followed by Jameson Williams, Michael Wilson. Michael Gallup, Marvin Mims, Alan Lazard, and Josh Downs. Barry, we didn't get to talk about those last three guys. Anything stand out to you with them? No, they're all sort of, you know, like Mims and Downs are more stashes. Again, we keep hoping Mims' role will increase. We've talked about him a lot on the show. And Alan Lazard, I'm just bringing up because, you know what? Hey, the Jets play the Broncos this week. Streamer. Lazard caught a touchdown this past week. We do think, like, again, if you need somebody this week and everyone above you, him is gone, Lazard might have uh, some potential this week in a good matchup. Let's jump right into running backs here for waiver wire, wa waiver wire. It's some notable running backs now on the bye. We talked about Cleveland before, of course, Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt with the Chargers, Austin Eckler and Joshua Kelly, Seattle, the great duo of Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet, and then with the Bucks, Rashad White. 
Yeah, but with a lot of running backs out for this week, we potentially are getting one back. So big news that happened after we did the show yesterday, which is that Jonathan Taylor expected to come off the physically unable to perform list off the um, off of that and practice this week with the team. Shane Steichen said he's gonna he he expects Jonathan Taylor to practice today, and so the assumption is is that Jonathan Taylor will be suited up on Sunday. And so I just Jonathan Taylor at this my, at this point might have the widest range of outcomes of any player in fantasy football. If you're telling me that Jonathan Taylor stays healthy the rest of the year and all's good in the hood in Indianapolis, and all of a sudden he's just going to slide right in and get the 98%, you know, uh, rushing attempts that uh, that Zach Moss does, this you know, the, this insane workload, Jonathan Taylor's the number one running back in fantasy. Like, it's him and Christian McCaffrey, like, yeah. right there. If he's going to get that kind of workload on that team. On the other hand, just because he practices, they could be like, well, Zach Moss has been pretty good, and Jim Irsay called down and said, nah, uh not with that guy. Screw that guy, or whatever. I mean, like, or, you know, we're trying to trade him. Don't, you know, put him in bubble wrap. I, who knows? Like, I have no idea what's going to happen here with Jonathan Taylor, but, like, he could be completely useless. He could literally be the number one running back in fantasy. Yep, I think you're right. The outcomes are from uh, current-day Christian McCaffrey to current-day Kareem Hunt. Like, literally, he might, just be, he might just be eight carries a game for a little bit because Zach Moss has been so solid and there's such weirdness around that situation. But I think that, say you're one and three uh, in a fantasy league and you need to take a swing to get back into it, then try to trade for Jonathan Taylor because you're yeah. not going to get a higher upside play. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, you still hold Zach Moss, right? 100%. I yeah. mean, so again, Zach Moss has 72 touches in three games. He's the ninth best running back in fantasy football so far, to your point. Zach Moss has been good, you know, and, you know, and so... Again, it's also one of those things that in terms of Shane, uh, Shane Steichen, new coach, trying to establish himself in the locker room, like, you know, like this stuff matters. And like guys in the locker room are not going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Zach Moss has been balling out for us. And all of a sudden now he's going to the bench like he's done nothing wrong. And again, I'm not saying that like Jonathan, he's replacing Jonathan Taylor because Jonathan Taylor is Jonathan Taylor. But the fact is, is that I don't think Zach Moss suddenly goes to zero touches like he's been too good. For him to get you know, I mean you lose the locker room that way when you know I mean so I, I don't know it, this is a wide range but I agree with you like I do think wide range so if you need to take a swing go for it you know like but definitely don't drop Zach Moss uh, trade for Jonathan Taylor or yes if you need to take a big swing one way or the other the top running back on waiver wires the this other thing week. by the way is also if you're if you are three and one you're four and zero. Oh, like I don't mind trading for Jonathan Taylor because your team's probably strong enough that you can take the hit Right. And then you can sort of be like, you know, I'll take the hit. And then like if he comes back and he's anything close to what we think. Powerhouse. Boom. Yeah. Then you're just rolling the yeah. rest of your league. The top running back back on waivers this week is Jaleel McLaughlin, um, the undrafted free agent out of Youngstown State that made the Broncos. He's available in 97 percent of leagues. Samaji Piran's available in 48 percent of leagues. They have the Jets this week. The report, all we have right now, guys, is Javante Williams with a hip injury, not expected to miss much time. But, Jay, we don't know what exactly that means. What we do know, McLaughlin is slowly getting involved already in this offense as a speed-catching scat back. Yeah, I mean, he certainly looked impressive, and they've given him some work in the red zone as well, which is a little bit surprising. But he was the guy last week. My question to you, though, Connor, is that Julian McLaughlin has a pass block rating on PFF of 5 out of 100. Is that just going to keep him off the field? It depends. You pretty much can't leave him back there to pass protect. So it means if they keep doing that, he has to get the ball coming his way. It is a problem. It's a problem, and that's why guys like this go undrafted. It happens all the time. When they're smaller backs, you don't feel like they can take a heavy workload on early downs, and then on third downs, you don't know if they could block. So they're kind of one-dimensional <laughs> if they don't play special teams. And I love, love McLaughlin's story and think it's very, very real. But, Jay, it's a really good point. As you see his snap rate right there, and this is with Javante going out at 33%. I think he's a guy that'll just never play over 40% of the snaps unless they're losing horrifically and constantly throwing. But that doesn't matter in right. this sense because what, to your point, is it, it it's actually means that, like, when he's out there, he's getting the ball. It's yes. a problem for defensive coordinators to be like, oh, <laughs> like, if he's out there, that you know, chances are. Like, and they'll work with him on the, on the, on the, on the pass pro. But, like, after Javante went out, he played 37% of the snaps. Samaji P. Ryan played 57% of the snaps. But then you look at the, the numbers, like – McLaughlin got 10 touches, P. Ryan got eight. A and so, and by the way, McLaughlin, much better. Like I was, Samaj P. Ryan was one of my guys in the preseason, but I'm, I'm willing to wave the white flag here and be like, it's just for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to be working out for him in Denver. A lot of stuff isn't working out there, but McLaughlin, uh, to your point, 
I mean, 7 for 72, so we know about the big playability. Like him in the passing game, 3 for 32 and a touchdown against the Bears. But remember, like, remember, like, I think in week two, he got one carry, but it was a five-yard touch for a touchdown. Like, they trusted him enough in the red zone to give him that one carry to give him inside the 10-yard line as well. He is the NCAA all-time leader in rushing yards, like all divisions, like so, yeah. including like you know, um, FCS and D2 and uh, you know everything like that. I mean, but like 8,166 yards, undrafted free agent out of Youngstown State. To your point, great story. Yeah. Uh, great story. Tons of speed. He's he he's a um, he's he's a he's a spark on a team that needs something. Yep. Anyway, so anyway, we'll, we'll move on. But I think he's I, – I agree with you. Like, he's not going to all of a sudden take over this backfield because of the pass pro issues, and so it'll be – but I, I could see him replacing P. Ryan on – you know, if, if once Javante comes back, and who knows on Javante with his hip, hip flexor, but we don't have a lot of information there. I just – he's a fast, talented running back that Sean Payton found and discovered and keeps using more and more and more, and – those are players that I think you want, and they'll fi- we'll, they'll figure out a way to get them on the field. Our next running back, Chuba Hubbard of the Panthers. They got the Lions this week. They are at Detroit. He's available in 75% of leagues. They go to Detroit, then they go to Miami. They got the bye week, and then Houston. Chuba Hubbard in week four, Jay, 14 carries, 41 yards, two catches for 12 yards. And we know Miles Sanders has been dealing with a groin injury. Yep, indeed. I think that was the reason why Chuba Hubbard saw more snaps, 54% of snaps versus Miles Sanders at 43%. Like Miles Sanders this year is averaging 2.9 yards per carry. It just hasn't happened at all. And Chuba Hubbard, who has been a staple of the Tuesday Waiver Wire show for 12 months now in various <laughs> yes. uh, iterations, uh, he's kind of the poster boy for this. But look, he gives you something out of the backfield. He's had 12 targets this season. Seems like they really want to throw to the running backs as well because Miles Sanders is getting a ton of targets too. So, I mean, it's not very exciting, but he does have some w- room here to provide value. Their offensive line hasn't been good. Bryce Young has struggled, and he's yeah. been willing to dump off to the running backs, and so maybe they just decide to go more run-heavy with both guys there as well. We mentioned P. Ryan before as well, but just to note here, and you'll see it when we come up with the full screen here, but it's McLaugh- for me, it's McLaughlin, Hubbard, and then P. Ryan. P. Ryan will have seen an increased role with the Javante Williams injury, but again, he's been under 40 total yards in three or four games this season, though I'm sort of like... P. Ryan qualifies at running back, and will get an increased role, but... There's not a lot of excitement here. Candidly, it's not a great week for running backs this week. Yeah, and with that, it brings us to Tajay Spears, who we've talked about on the show. He becomes Tom. relevant with the Derrick Henry injury, Barry, but besides, it's the reason he's available in 76% of leagues. I mean, the fact he's playing is nice. Five carries, 40 yards. He's making the most of his touches. Three cat catches for 18 yards in week four. But with Tajay Spears, he's just a part-time player with an offense that has a lead back. He's a stash. Yep. He's a stash until something happens with Derrick Henry, whether he gets hurt it's like or if he gets traded. Correct. Yeah. He's he's just he's merely a high upside stash, as is the next guy on our list, Connor, Jeff Wilson Jr. Like, so he's he's eligible to return to practice this week. Now we've heard nothing out of Miami yeah, in weird. terms of his injuries, and obviously, given the success of Mostert and specifically Devon Achan, they aren't necessarily rushing to running back. They actually like Savon Ahmed there as well. So it is a bit of a crowded backfield or running back room. But Jeff Wilson Jr., following the trade from San Francisco last year, led the Dolphins in red zone touches and goal-to-go carries. He's somebody that has a history with Mike McDaniel as well. And so given the explosiveness of, of this offense, Jeff Wilson Jr. is another guy that should probably be stashed on your bench if and when he comes back and is eligible to return. Let's recap. He's eligible to return, but if and when he comes back yeah. and gets on the field, I should say. Let's recap your top running back waiver targets yep. going into week five. You hinted at it earlier with Jaleel McLaughlin, Chuba Hubbard, Samaji Pirine, and then it is followed by Tajay Spears and Jeff Wilson. So with that, let's jump right into the quarterbacks for waiver wired here. And guys, we have to start with C.J. Stroud, who at this point is a rookie sensation in terms of the passing yards. I mean, Jay, he's available in over half leagues right now. This Texans offense through the air has surprisingly looked awesome under Bobby Slowick so far. Yeah, C.J. Stroud's the real deal. The concern was his offensive line going up against T.J. Watt last week. Uh, no sacks for the Steelers. Week before that, no sacks for the Jags either. Stroud has been incredible. The past three weeks, he's the fifth-ranked quarterback in EPA per play, sixth in success rate. He's the number one quarterback in the NFL this season for passer rating against man coverage. He's just been phenomenal, and he's well-performed, outperformed expectations. 
think he's thrown. I, I think he has. He has yet to throw an interception Hasn't this year. An interception. I think he's got the most passing yards for a rookie through four games. So he has to break the record by a mile. Yes, by a mile for a rookie. He's been. He's been nothing short of fantastic, and it's crazy to think about this. Remember, in the preseason, in the pre-draft process, there was talks like he's going to drop. He 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 had a bad Wonderlick score. Yeah, it was the, uh, was the like Will Levis is, uh, yeah. Will Levis is going to go over him. All this stuff, and then he gets drafted number two by the Texans, and then he had that first preseason game. He looked a little bit lost, and I was like, oh boy, we know, you know, looks Here like we he's, go. Yeah. he's a bust. Quarterback. You know, he's been nothing short of phenomenal. Multiple touchdown passes and at least 280 passing yards in all three games that he's played the last three as well. Look at the schedule, too. At Atlanta, home to New Orleans, okay, fine. Bye. At Carolina, like, it's not a schedule that scares you at all. And, like, with Nico Collins and Tank Dell, and even Robert Woods, who doesn't seem completely done yet. I mean, like, all of a sudden they've got weapons, and their offensive line is getting healthier. They should get Tunsil back this week. I CJ Stroud is like a – he is – to me, he is now in the – the Kirk, well, I mean, Kirk Cousins is better this year, but you know what I mean? Like that, that high end QB two range that, you know, on certain weeks could get into the, you know, QB one conversation, like Brock Purdy, Geno Smith. Yeah. That kind of range. Jared Goff, yeah. like that range. Goff when yeah, about exactly. I mean, That's they have some similar play style, by the way. Yeah. To and, an extent. But by the way, ha- with the potential to like be, you know, have a monster game, three straight games with over 20 fantasy points is nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. And look, I think Stroud's got, he's gotten a little bit lucky so far. You generally always get lucky if you avoid yeah. any picks for four games. But I think that will be counteracted by the fact that O-line will get better and they have the easiest remaining schedule in the NFL playing in the AFC South. Uh, by the way, even if you, do, even if you're quote unquote, you don't need a quarterback, I still think he's a priority if he's still available in your league because like, he he's a legit fantasy starter the rest of the way yep. and as a result like if you have cj stroud and you had i'm making it up right but pretend you had like josh allen and you pick up cj stroud and you're like but my running back room is decimated well then trade josh allen for a very yes. you know for a high-end running back yep. or a high-end wide receiver because cj stroud is good enough to carry your fantasy team as a starting quarterback in fantasy the rest of the way our next one, Matthew Stafford. He's available in 50% of leagues. They got the Eagles on deck right now. And shockingly, Barry, the Eagles are allowing the sixth most passing yards this season. Now, they've had some massive leads that probably contribute to that at times. But it looks and like a good matchup. And then they ran into matchup. a buzzsaw named Sam Howell. Don't forget that. That's fair. Yes. And that was and not a him. massive lead. <laughs> <laughs> Barely beat him. Yeah, sure. Yeah, only because they, didn't call, don't count the they same. didn't call a false start on fourth down. <laughs> NBD just saying, whatever. Home, some home cooking there. Feels like um, the touchdowns are coming for Stafford. Effort, and that would really just alter his entire stat line. 300 plus do. passing yards in three to four games this season. You mentioned the Philadelphia Eagles, not necessarily as formidable, formidable a defense as you might have thought. Chance potentially to get Cooper Cup back this week. We haven't heard yet, but there's a chance that Cup comes back this week as well. But Matthew Stafford looks great. They're throwing a ton. He'll get Cooper Cup back at some point, whether it's this week or not. But certainly, again, with his skill level and the amount they're throwing. By the way, not after Philadelphia, Arizona, not a defense that scares you. Pittsburgh, they've been brutal this year. And then at Dallas, all right, fine. But like for the next three <laughs> weeks, like they're, you know, it, it's good matchups here for Matthew Stafford. Go ahead, read. You know what, Connor, do me a favor. Can you read the next guy on your list there? Jay, just do that. Do you want me to do it? Um, Sam Howell. He's yeah! 74% available. Future and Hall he gets Famer. the Bears on. Uh, the Bears might not, he might not get sacked five times against the Bears. Uh, not so fearsome D line. But look, Sam Howell has been. Very good. You hope that he would get a little bit more on the ground. But, I mean, look, if he's going to do what he does through the air, then that's perfectly fine. Future Hall of Famer Sam yeah. Howell has had 19 fantasy points in two of the last three games. I like the 40 rushing yards against Philadelphia. All of them on scrambles. Hopefully we get some design runs in there. Only one team in the NFL has allowed more fantasy points than the Bears this season. Then you got Josh Dobbs. We've talked about him a lot. Last three weeks, he's the second best quarterback in fantasy. <laughs> he's the second best quarterback in fantasy. It's not just like, oh, he's been good. He's the second best quarterback in fantasy since we Against two. Dallas and San Francisco. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Three straight games with over 40 rushing yards. Bengals, Rams, Seattle, Baltimore next. And then Zach Wilson. Welcome to the show, Zach Wilson. <laughs> we think in a deeper league, if you're desperate, he's at Denver. No team in the NFL has allowed more fantasy points to the opposing quarterback than the Denver Broncos. Zach Wilson looked fairly competent this yes. past Sunday night. Shockingly competent. Against a good defense. Against yeah, a good a defense. So we'll Outplayed Patrick can... Mahomes. We'll yes, he legitimately did. Yes. All right, that takes us to tight ends for this week right now. And some news before we jump fully into this list here. Pat Fryermuth 
with a hamstring injury, expected to miss multiple weeks. Chargers tight end Donald Parham suffered a sprained wrist on Sunday as well as the Chargers head to the bye. But Barry, as we look here, here's the tight end waiver targets heading into the week led by Jake Ferguson. Yeah, I mean, look, um, I mean, Ferguson's available in about 47% of leagues, so, you know, it's borderline there. But he's had at least seven targets in three or four games. He's, he, here's what's interesting about him. Ten red zone targets tied for most in the NFL. Back-to-back games with five receptions. Dak Prescott and his, his tight ends. He made Dalton Schultz a thing. Jake Ferguson is legitimate as well. The Bears offense starting to get better as well. Komet being a part of that as well. How about Zach Ertz? Again, we keep talking about Josh Dobbs and this Cardinals offense. Zach Ertz, one of two tight ends with 30 or more targets this season. It's yeah. him and TJ Hawkinson. It's incredible how much they're using him. He's got a 25% target share, which is most, you know, in the NFL among tight ends as well. So Ertz should not be available in 74% of leagues. And then it starts getting dicey, right? I mean, Logan Thomas has the Bears this week. He's fully healthy. He's part of that offense as well. Tyler Conklin made some nice plays for yeah. Zach Wilson. And it's the Broncos. Once and again, you're just hoping again. for a – you believe in a touchdown if you stream Tyler Conklin this week and Logan Thomas. And then, and then let, let, you know what? There's actually, like, we talked about him some in the preseason, but, you know, we talked about the tight end from Atlanta. We thought this could be a breakout year for him. Very of course, athletic tight end. Very athletic tight end. We, <laughs> we thought, you know, hey, this is probably the final of the year for John News. Myth? <laughs> Look, I, it's I don't understand it either. This is nightmare but, fuel. This graphic. But traffic. like it's, it we are in crazy town. But the fact <laughs> of the matter is, is that Jonu Smith has one less target, but uh, four more receptions, like over 50 more receiving yards and more fantasy points per game than number eight, Kyle Pitts. Three straight games, he's got a 20% target share. Jonu Smith does, and I want to just I want to give credit here. So. Evan Silva, former Roto World guy, does a great job over at Establish the Run. He threw out this theory, and I think it's a great theory. I don't know if it's true or not, but I really like the theory, which is like, it's like, I wonder if Arthur Smith just doesn't like Kyle Pitts. That John o. Smith is more of his guy, like a much more a big physical tight end. I'm paraphrasing what Evan said, but like in essence, that was his theory. Was it's just like John o. Smith is just more of a, like a football guy, you know, and like just a big physical guy in terms of the kind of offense that they want to run versus Kyle Pitts, who's like this, you know, slim move tight end, who's yeah. just not a big, a big wide receiver. Yeah, just like a big yeah. wide receiver. And just Jonathan Smith maybe just fits what they're trying to do in terms of the physicality and running the ball. So he's just out there. I don't know. For a situation with no explanations, I'm willing to accept any explanation. Same. So why not? I just, I don't, I, I, it, none of it makes sense. But the fact is Jonathan Smith is 99% available. And if you would like to roster a tight end for the Falcons, it feels like he's the... <laughs> He's the one you want. Like, what world do we live in? I, Smith. I don't know. Sounds like a rugby player. How yeah. about a couple defenses to stream yeah, here, Jay? The that. Lions got the Panthers on deck. The Commanders have the Bears and the Dolphins hoping to take advantage of what is left of the Giants' offensive line. Yep, Lions' defense is just legitimately good. Aiden yep. Hutchinson has been a monster. Brian Branch wreaking havoc. Commander's Day against Chicago, that speaks for itself. And then the Dolphins, if Seattle can sack Daniel Jones 11 times, feels like the Dolphins can do it five times, so they will be a viable option as well. Yeah, all these are viable streamers as well. Washington, by the way, sixth in sack rate. Just want to mention that oh, as well. For you. Three of the four defenses to face the Giants have scored double digit fantasy points as well. Fins up for the Dolphins. But you're like, okay, if I'm picking up all these players, Barry, then I've got to drop somebody. Who can I who can I lose for my team? Who is welcome oh, to no. Dumpsville? Oh no. Population no. Hey, Pitts. At what point do you feel comfortable starting Kyle Pitts? Uh, Again, if you're not in the keeper league, if it's the same like I'm holding on. I mean, I don't know. You're holding on, that's yeah. fine. Knock yourself out. Literally, he can't out earn, he can't get more targets than John U. Smith. Jay Croucher, Dalvin Cook, A.J. Dillon on there. JSN, again, that's a second half play, but just it hasn't seemed to happen yet. We talked about Gallup, so Brandon Cooks makes the drop list. Josh Kelly, they're on a bye this week. It yeah, looks like Eckler's coming back the week after that. He hasn't been good so far. So to me, that's some of the guys that, I'm not saying you must drop them, but if you're looking for somebody on your team that you feel like, ah, I probably could use, lose that guy, those are some guys you could lose. With that, we'll take our first break. When we're back, we're recapping Monday Night Football. The Seahawks and the Giants kind of played a game on Monday night. We'll be back yeah. after this. There's a reason it's in segment two.
I'm going to go with Devin Witherspoon, who was drafted in the top five of the draft. He had his best week of the season so far in week three. Double-digit targets. He only allowed, I think, five catches and one first down. He was lights out. He broke up two passes. He's been great against the run. You just see the juice on the field with this guy. Shot Ben snap, drops back three. Run, right throw, intercepted. It's picked up on the play with his third. The five on the numbers up field. The 20, the 30, breaks a tackle. 50, angles to the middle. The 30, the 20, far side 10, five, foot race. Touchdown, touchdown. It's a Seattle pick six. Devin Witherspoon. Devin Witherspoon, plus 2,000 to win Defensive Rookie of the Year last week, plus 750 before the pick six, plus 175 now. How quickly it drops, Jay. Good call, Connor. Good call. Good call by you. He, he plays so loud. It's unbelievable. You cannot he is miss a him missile on the, out there. You cannot miss him on the field. It was like that at Illinois, and it's instantly translated to the NFL. As you see the Jay Croucher tweet right here, D-Roy coming as prophesied by a week ago. My happy, happy, happy hour, hour 20 at 20 to 1. 20 to 1. Yeah. By, <laughs> Con, by at Connor J. Rogers. I like how Jay Croucher <laughs> sort of like tries to It's in the real tweet. It's in the real tweet. we Photoshop it out? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's like, it's it's interesting. I can't believe, like, give Jay. Oh, you couldn't tag Connor. You couldn't, like, <laughs> I tagged him. It's so outrageous. Him like, anyway, tweet. at Connor J. Rogers on Twitter, please follow him. He's at Connor James Rogers on the gram. There we go. Absolutely. You, do not do me a favor. And follow Jay because you won't find anyone else to follow. I will tell you this though, Devin Witherspoon, if you would like to come by the Fantasy Football Happy Hour Bar, you drink free today yes. because great call by you, great game by him, great season by him, unbelievable. Uh, our friend Lawrence, I think, uh, sent us a screenshot like he's in an IDP league where Witherspoon had 80 fantasy points last night, <laughs> <laughs> like in some league that he's in. Like yeah. it's that's, unbelievable that's how unbelievable. good he was last night specifically. Um, as good as he is, I wonder how much of this is just like it's also the Giants' offensive line is bad. Their offense is brutal. Th as we talked about in the last segment, three of the four defenses that have played the Giants have scored double-digit fantasy points. Like, um, like, it may, like my Twitter feed is filled up with people that sent me screenshots of people that were like, I was dead, and then I started the Seattle defense, and now I won, you know, Monday Night Miracle. I mean, there's just sometimes an offensive line just gets so bad where it's just no longer viable. Everything just burns. Think back to Jay Cutler on some of those Chicago teams where yeah. he's getting sacked eight times in prime time. He just can't do anything. And the fact that no Andrew Thomas, Evan Neal has just been a disaster for this team. And Daniel Jones, I mean, I, the pick six was terrible, but also when you get sacked 11 times, there's just no hope. Like, of course you should be you know, you're throwing it to opponent players because you don't know what planet you're on at that point. But he was bad. Uh, everything was bad about this offense. Uh, the only good thing to me is that Wondell Robinson saw additional snaps and he kind of became a bit more of the guy in that passing offense, but there's not much not much hope there. By the way, on the waiver wire show again, you'd have to be a deep league, but I do think your point, like I do think I do think the offense will ultimately get somewhat better. And I do think the fact that Wondell Robinson, who's gotten at least five targets in back to back games, went from a twenty two percent target uh, snap share to sixty four percent last night. Like if he gets over eighty percent and he's getting that kind of targets, like Wanda Robinson is somebody that Brian Dayball drafted. Like he's he's their guy. They really like him as well. Now, having said that, they can't seem to get the ball to anyone. Darren Waller had a nine point in a game in which they get in their asses kicked, had a single digit target share. Nine four nine point four percent his lowest of the season. Again, like we had such a great betting night. Of the, you know, I mean, like in terms of like you got first to 15, really well done. I had Ken Walker anytime touchdown that worked out. But one of my key drafts, uh, one of my bets on DraftKings was also that Darren Waller over 46 and a half receiving yards didn't come close to that. Like I'm well, like, I they, lost, down. they lost 10 passing plays to sacks. I mean, the it's issue. Like so that's I mean, potentially seven or eight percent. He's single digit fantasy points in three or four games. He's been under 40 receiving yards in three or four games. This is somebody that a lot of us, including me, were very high on in the preseason. Are we bailing on Darren Waller? Uh, no, Andrew Thomas will come back. They, they will get better. This was a just competent enough offense last year, so it will get better. So I think you just have to hold firm with Darren Waller for the time being. They've also, I mean, outside of the Seahawks, they've, they've played some amazing defenses in the Niners and the Cowboys. So I think it'll get better for Waller, and he's still a hold. On the Seattle side of the ball, just a weird game overall for the Seahawks. Geno gets injured, comes out. You know, they get the pick six uh, return. And so... 
look, there's just not much to read into this. I think Zach Charbonnet saw a little bit of time. Gino didn't play particularly well. The receivers, it's still Lockett and Metcalf. Those are you guys. Jason got three targets, but that's fine as well. Um, worth, worth noting as well that Charbonnet, though, did to play 22% of snaps. Uh, average 6.2 uh, 6 yards per carry. Uh, as you see there, 24% snap rate. He looks Sorry. good. Right, he looks good. Like, he's somebody that, again, needs to be rostered in leagues. It feels like he might get a chance. They didn't need him that much because they just, they were, you know, they were up by so big. Yep. They were up, uh, up so much as well. Better days ahead for Daniel Jones, who remains at QB2. Like, again, at least the rushing was there for Daniel Jones. But, oofa. We're taking our last break. They've been when on we're prime back. time three out of four games. No, great the cast. Giants have. Fantastic it's been cast. tough. They haven't had many good quarters in football no, this year. Not. We're going to break one more time when we're back. Look at our favorite futures bets, courtesy of DraftKings. Yeah. Like your Devin Witherspoon from a That's week right. ago. Oh, you got it Connor when you J. Could. Rogers. Not that anyone would tag you on Twitter and give you credit. Don't forget on DraftKings Sportsbook, this season, new customers can bet $5 and pocket $200 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, all customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every day. Download the app and use the promo code BERRY when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, crown is yours. All right, let's do a little back to the futures here, guys. Some of the futures we're looking at, courtesy of our friends at DraftKings. Jay, what do you got for us this week? We have the coach of the year market. Now, the three guys everyone will want to vote for, Mike McDaniel, Dan Campbell, D'Amico Ryans, in my opinion, they have the biggest buzz. But I'm looking at Todd Bowles further down the screen. He's at 18-1 to 1 to win coach of the year. This team's win total is 6.5 coming into the season. They have a chance to go 11 wins, win the division, improve by three or four wins the year after Tom Brady leaves. I think Todd Bowles uh, has a chance to win this award. Matthew. What do you got? I, I, listen, there are two guys on there that I think are really interesting there, and that's D'Amico Ryans at plus 1,200 and Sean McVay at 2,200. First off, I mean, everyone expects Houston was left for dead, and Houston legitimately could win that division, right? And then you've got McVay. The media loves McVay, yep. and the Rams are a lot better than I think, you know, Puka Naku has become a thing, Kyron Williams. So if the Rams end up somehow winning that division or even getting into the playoffs, they suddenly be, could uh, be pretty interesting as well. I'll just say this, that DeMar Hamlin, comeback player of the year, is at minus 250. Again, it's free money. The guy played snaps. He was almost dead a year ago. He does. And he played yeah. snaps. He played snaps this, this past weekend for the Bills on special teams. He saw it in all the highlights as well. He's, his, his playing time is only going to increase. It's free money. Minus 2,000 for me there. Yeah, good yeah. one. What do you got, Connor? Another rookie of the year value here, guys. I'm looking at Anthony Richardson plus 550. I love C.J. Stroud. I get it. He's all the way down to plus 175. The value is gone there. I like Richardson because, one, the explosive play rate, and number two, Colts can win this division. And if yep. they do, who gets all the credit? Anthony Richardson. He's one of the most exciting young players in all NFL. Again, Devin Witherspoon last week was a great call at Connor J. Rogers. For Jay and Connor, I'm Matthew. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.